By 2050, the number of vehicles on our roads is set to double to 2.5 billion. Most of this growth will take place in developing countries where air pollution is already a major challenge in many cities. I mean, we do get distracted from uh, the shiny Teslas uh, as the vehicle uh, uh, that we're driving towards when we talk about e-mobility. But when we talk about e-mobility, it's electric buses, it's also light rail, uh, but it's also electric tuk-tuks, electric uh, scooters um, that are very viable technology options already. So I think at the moment, most people think electric vehicles are not for them. There aren't that many on the road and you don't always see that many of them. People worry about whether you can drive a long way, about how you charge them. All of those issues, I think, are becoming uh, easier and easier. People are solving them. Um, and I think electric vehicles will be in everyone's life in a remarkably uh, quick time. but we would like to see much more systemic change. And with that, we think we can save up to six trillion of transport-related costs every year with a much more focus on shared and public electric mobility that goes way beyond just changing the vehicle technology. And the new draft e-mobility global program will build on such experiences. And this time we have 17 uh, developing countries that have joined we have the JAF and we have uh, UNEP and the International Energy Agency to start this program enabling policy environments to be uh, adequate, ensure effective technology transfer, facilitate private sector engagement and also uh, enable uh, much better access to finance, to commercial finance for the introduction of e-vehicle fleets. Chile has a track record in low carbon development and is one of the program countries. On the surface transport, we have launched a new standard called RED to introduce more quality buses and with zero emission. We started in 2016 with one electrical test bus. The next year, we added three buses to the public transport. Finally, last year, we made a relevant leap with the first 100 electrical buses fleet. Antigua and Barbuda, another participating country, faces constraints in moving over to e-mobility. So one of the major challenges we're facing with this switch is the upfront capital cost, as it can be significantly greater uh, than that of a conventional bus, especially considering the fact that it has to be imported to the island. COP25 is taking place in Madrid, a city making impressive strides towards e-mobility. Well, at the moment we have uh, five different uh, car sharing companies in Madrid using fully electric vehicles with around almost 3,000 vehicles. We have six uh, motor sharing companies, so light uh, motorbikes, fully electric as well with more than 4,100. And then we have uh, uh, more recently e-scooter companies, kick scooters, also fully electric. So that is generating a lot of visibility. E-mobility has potentially huge benefits when coupled with non-motorized vehicles and public transport as well as cities designed for walking, it's a win-win all round. I do get excited about livable cities, about air that we can breathe, about saving the climate. E-mobility is one tool of it. Urban planning is another one, public transport is a very big one, walking and cycling is essential, and then for all the rest that is still roaming around, it needs to be shared, publicly available, accessible, affordable, and electric.